In today's video, we're going to be exploring images and photos in Canva and exactly what options you have to improve your designs with those images. So I've got my uh, canvas set up here and we're going to play with a few photos. So as I've mentioned in my one of my previous videos, you can also go to uploads here and upload your own photos as I have down here, including transparent PNGs. Uh, and we're going to work with some photos straight out of Canva just for a bit of fun. So. We've got this photo here, which is a free photo of a family, and we're going to pop that on the screen. And we're just going to explore what you can do with those photos for image design. Not so, so much concerned with animation as much as what you can do. Now, I'm going to briefly touch on some of the things we have touched on before, which are some of the obvious things. If I click on this image, if I grab these circular handles, I can resize them. If I grab these flat handles, I can crop and move around as I see fit. And if I don't want things to be cropped in that fashion, I can hit this crop feature up here, move the image to where I want, even bring it and size it a bit closer, and then click done to get the cropping that I want. And of course, if I want to do things such as flip or mirror the image, I go to flip, I can flip horizontal, and I can also flip vertical. So you've got some options there to, some very basic options for images to get them more or less looking the way you want. However, you do have some other options here, such as alignment. You can align it to the top of the page or to the very middle and the very center of the page if you want it to be in the exact position. And that's more of an alignment thing than an image thing. But you do also have some other options, such as transparencies. So if I decide I want to pop this image in here as well and overlay it over here, I can actually click on here with a transparency and make it semi-transparent. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see what's going on. Most of these settings you're going to find across here are pretty straightforward. We can duplicate this image here. We can lock it so I can't actually move it. I can just click and unlock. And we also have copy style. So I want to copy the style of this image and paste it on this one so they're both done the exact same way. But I'm going to undo that. I'm going to take this image and restore it to full strength. So if I click on this green image here and use edit image, this is where you're going to find a bunch of options. The cool thing is, if you have Pro, there's a background remover, so if you have a person in a photo you want to cut out, you can do that quite easily. But by scrolling down here, you can see a lot of the options that you have. So, what we're going to do, straight away we've got brightness, so we can change the brightness of the image from darker to lighter, adjust the contrast, and even take the saturation right out, or really pump it up for something full on. But if I go to see all here, I actually have a bunch of other options. I can tint this image. So if I don't want it green, I can change the tint so it looks a little bit different. I can even blur the image or sharpen it by going in the other direction. X process is actually something kind of like enhances or uh, sort of takes the image in a different process, a different sort of, well, it just sort of gives it a different sort of color or lighting balance. And then of course you've got like a vignette, which just adds a bit of shadow around the outside of the image, which if I do this, you can sort of see more clearly the shadows in the corner. If I bump that right back, it disappears. And you just get the chance to really play with the color. So warmth will give it more of a red or yellow sort of appearance. Clarity will sharpen the image. So if you can't see that there, we've got a very standard image and then it sharpens right up when I put the clarity to the top. And then of course we've got vibrance. So I can sort of like, again, adjust the vibrance or the highlights of the image. So all of these allow you to control various aspects. I can darken or lighten the shadows, I can fade so we get more of a, a flat look. So we've got a few options there to really get the image looking the way that we want. So you can see, if you play with these images, these areas, you can blur, sharpen, and adjust the light to get the image looking pretty much exactly how you want it and still just suck all the color out if you want to. And that tint can also give it a bit of a color as well. So you sort of get the idea. And then you can even take it further by playing with some of these. So you can see how different this image looks compared to the way it started. If I hit undo a bunch of times, this is more or less the way the image started, maybe a few adjustments. So you can see how much you can actually do just by going to those settings. So reset, I head back, 
So that's under these three settings here, you can click see all to get all those effects. But if you're not really keen on playing with all of the sliders, you can also go down to filters. You can choose these filters and they will sort of give the image a certain look and you can scroll through. You can also take something such as this epic filter and really increase it or turn it all the way pretty much to nothing. But if you go to see all again, you have more filters you can try such as this will adjust the color or it'll make it grayscale. And you can actually play with these here. If you take this peony one and click on the little dials here, you can change the intensity. Go back. I'm just gonna go back to none. Go from there. Now smart mockups is a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna skip past that, but if you're doing a design and you wanna actually showcase that to a client, you can pop it on a mock-up and it will sort of show what it looks like within say a phone or a laptop or an envelope. So just one thing I want to touch on, if you have a quick look, you can see you've got a bunch of mock-ups here that you can use and it's, uh, it's pretty handy. For example, now our image is on the laptop. So you can see you have a few options for adding certain things to mock-ups, but I'm just going to cancel out of that. Now shadows, because we've got these two images here overlapping, I can add a glow. So we've got like a bit of a glow around it, which if I click on these little dials, I can change the color to something like red. So we've got this red glow, make the glow nice and big, make it less transparent. I can really have it stand out, get that blur cranked up and give it like a real mighty glow <laughs> that stands out, which most people probably aren't gonna like for this particular example. So we're going back. We've got drop shadow or angle shadow. So you can see the shadows on an angle. If I click through again, you can change the angle to get it the way you want. Let's go cancel. But if I click see all, you can see you've got a few options here, such as a curved shadow or a backdrop. It sort of sits off to the back like that. But we're just gonna stick with a normal shadow for now, just so it looks nicely overlaid over this image here. So once again, back into edit image. Now photogenic, again, some more filters you can play with to adjust the image. You can see what they do here. It previews it, so that way you don't actually have to apply it. But some of the more funkier ones are, say, color pop. And you actually go into here, once again, change that intensity. And you can try a bunch of other sort of filters you find under there, under photogenic. And these down the bottom are a bit different. So auto enhance will allow you to auto enhance an image, smart focus letter mosaic, which is a little bit different. If I click on that, I will use it. I can choose something like this. You get this cool sort of letter effect. Although it's a bit hard to see there. So if I click on this here, maybe I can make it a bit. Bit bigger. And get a bit of an idea of what we're doing there. But it's a little bit, <laughs> it's a funny feature, but if you want to play with the design a bit, you can get some cool effects that way. Uh, I'm gonna cancel. Frames, Duotone, which is kind of like a gradient map, I believe, like in Photoshop. If I actually click, I've got Duotone selected. So I can click here and choose a tone. Maybe I click on these sliders. So if I change this here from blue to something like a green. All the dark shadow areas that are blue here will turn to green, which is a bit hard to see. But if I click on the highlights and make that yellow, then we get a different effect. So essentially split the image down to two colors from light to dark with the basically those two colors on that image. So essentially there's a whole bunch of effects you can try here, this slice effect. And if you're looking for any kind of effects, that's where you would go to get that looking the way it is there and just have a play and look around at some of these effects to get the result you're after. It's pretty cool. But ultimately, when it comes to images, the main thing you're gonna wanna do is actually adjust things like color, cropping and things like that. But there's one more thing. If I actually go to elements here, I've got down the bottom, 
frames in grids. Now, in the last video, I did show how you can use frame, uh, grids, which I'll just touch on quickly. I'm gonna zoom out here. If I take this grid here of two photos, I'm gonna right click and bring it to the front. If I go over here to photos, I can either drag these existing photos in there, like just click and drag them into a frame, or I can take one of these photos and pop it in there. So I can actually create grids of photos by going into my elements and choosing any of these grids I see here to create a grid layout of photos, which is pretty handy and I can resize and do what I need to get the shape that I want. But also we have frames. So I'm gonna click see all for the frames you see we've got a bunch of different options here, such as a phone, I can pop over here. This painting style frame, I'll pop here. And even circles and other bits and pieces like a diamond. And what I can do is grab my image and pop it into these. I can also double click and align that image the way I want to within that, double click out and grab other photos on the left here that are free because I don't have a pro plan and pop that in there. Once again, double click and resize and get some cool effects that way as well. So you do have some pretty cool options for framing images up in Canva as well by going into elements and frames. So you can see there's a whole bunch of frames here that you can use to create pretty nifty image effects. But otherwise, I mean, there's there are lots of little hidden details and options out there, but that's probably gonna be most of what you need to understand and really maximize what you can do in Canva. And if you're looking to take it a step further, you really wanna take your image editing to the next level, I would actually recommend trying something like Adobe Photoshop because that takes what your options are to a whole different level. And uh, it's just, that's just a confusingly large program, but awesome for image editing. But for basic design work, what we see here in Canva really does a great job. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. And uh, if you did, please consider, consider giving the video a like. And if you want more videos like this about how to use Canva, leave a comment below on what you're looking for. And also check out our playlist in the description below. If you haven't used Canva before, check out the link also in the description below and uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks for watching the video. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you soon.